I'm going to use the phrase 1788 as a shorthand for that moving frontier of, of settlement that began in Sydney Cove in 1788, obviously, and then moved across the country for the next, what, 140-odd years. I'm going to begin with this map, which shows the approximate distribution of Galahs in 1788. The numbers you can see locate the first uh, Galah that various explorers said they saw. And quite often they said, for the first time we saw the Rose Cockatoo, or words to that effect. And since most explorers advanced inland from the coast, their sightings marked the rough outer limit of Galah distribution, so they're further in from those numbers. And the numbers show that Galahs were largely birds of the arid inland, or if they were on a coast, it was an arid coast. Except in New South Wales, all our modern crop lands, where Galahs are now common, too common, had no Galahs, nor did any capital city. There were none around here, and none around Wagga, where I grew up. Why did Galahs spread? after 1788. Most experts assume it was because farms provided water and grain. Those are fragile explanations. If only water was lacking, Galahs could have quit the inland along rivers like the Darling, the Burdekin, the Victoria and the Murchison. They didn't. On grain, Galahs began to spread before there was any agriculture they spread into areas where there never were crops, such as Darwin and the Kimberley Coast and the Nullarbor. And on reaching European cropland, they didn't stay there, but they kept right on going over mountains, onto beaches, into cities. Cropland was but a bountiful sector on the long journey Galahs made to the coast. Why didn't they spread before 1788. The map also shows, shows what I call uh, Tyndale's Ark. That's that inland boomerang uh, bordered by dashes, which I superimposed uh, from a map that Norman Tyndale uh, made in 1974, I think it was. Outside that ark, Tim, Tyndale wrote, tubers and bulbs were the staple foods in 1788. Inside it, Grains like native millet and wild rice were because it was too dry for tubers. So people outside burnt grass before it headed to nourish and expose tubers, but people inside let grain head. So well, thus there was seed for galahs inside, but not outside the ark, or if it was outside, only in country too arid for tubers to be reliable. Then Europeans came. They stopped people burning, because they had the values of England in that regard, and their stock shortened the grass. You know that uh, undergrazing grass heads uh, close to the ground. That allowed uh, galahs to eat that seed, because galahs are ground feeders, and now tuber country carried grain that they could reach 